detectives say at around 2 a.m., an officer was on patrol near Northwest 7th Avenue and 2nd Street when he saw a man armed with a knife stab a woman. Got notified um, last night one of our officers was involved in a shooting. He got to the scene, observed a male stabbing a female with a knife, and he was forced to use uh, deadly force. All right, you got media on the scene. So today I was gonna vlog about my annual firearms qualification that I had to do. Um, you know, it's something that all officers have to do. We have to qualify once a year. Was notified that there was a police involved shooting last night. And I was gonna show you a little bit about the scene and what's going on right now. Crime scene is here and they're processing the scene. We also have homicide detectives out here. And um, as you saw, there were some media. Because it's early morning and people are waking up for school, they shelter the crime scene. They put a mobile wall around it, it's like a tent, um, and then they continue conducting their investigation. And that's why it's important that officers train with their firearm because um, even though it doesn't happen often, there are times when we have to use deadly force. All right, so we're gonna head back to the station and um, later on, we're gonna go qualify at the gun range. All right guys, back in the office. Later on, we're going to the police college, which houses our training facility. Um, it has the indoor gun range there, and that's where we're gonna qualify. Also located inside the police college is the Law Enforcement Officers Memorial High School. It's a one-of-a-kind high school, it's a Miami-Dade school. It has magnet programs in criminal justice and law enforcement. Um, we're gonna go head over there now and check it out. But before we do... Good morning, Miss Sharon, how are you? I want to int good, thank introduce you, you to Letitia. I'm calling from the social media unit. How are you? I want to introduce you to Letitia. She's on the phone right now. She's calling the okay, high school. Hey, would you? Hi. She's our new social media specialist. Um, yes, she, she just joined the team. Um, her name is Letitia. I like to call her Letitia Fierce. As soon as she gets off the phone, we're gonna go. We So there's our office over there, and that's the school right here, a little orange pole. Here are my new friends, they're going to show us around the high school. <laughs> I got Ariana, right? Yeah. Miss Grande, I'll call you. Oh no. Jerry and Abby, right? Correct? No. I got that right? Oh, I'm good. You guys ready? They're going to show us around the high school. Yeah. Definitely ready, so okay. we're going that one. So we're in forensics first. Forensics first? Yeah. Forensics. forensics. Abby's going to show us about forensics. Okay, let's see what you guys wear the uniform. Because that's first. Let me see. This is our Monday uniform. So it's our button down shirts, our ID, okay. the school badge, and then the navy blue pants. And our boots. And our boots. Okay. So this is your Monday uniforms. Yes. But it's uh, Thursday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the fourth <laughs> And it's mandatory to wear on Mondays, and then from uh, Tuesdays to Fridays, we can wear our polo shirts. Yeah. And on Fridays, we can wear um, like special club shirts or academy shirts. Yeah. And if we have a formal event such as this, mm -hmm. we wear our formal Monday attire. Oh, they they dressed up for us. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> All right. That's that's the iodide for the fingerprint analysis. That's the super glue for we can find latent fingerprints on surf like metal surfaces. What are you saying about a tenth grade Every year project? We do a, a big project. Mm -hmm. And then freshman year we did a project on a serial killer where we had to and, and like, kind of 
do their bibliography of their life. Everyone picks their own serial killer. Okay. I picked Ed Gein. It's so gross. <laughs> and then for 10th grade, we do a crime scene analysis. So we set up a crime scene, we set up markers, and then we analyze the evidence. And then we have to determine based on our evidence what, what happened. And this year, it was our entomology lab. And later on, we're going to be doing DNA analysis. So Ariana is going to take us now over to the law studies law area. studies area. So actually, this whole hallway is social studies, and near the end is where we have our law studies class and our actual courtroom. Okay. Whoa, courtroom. We have um. Well, we made our own version of courtroom. Yeah. So as law students, we go in and we'll do mock trials and we'll practice what we learn in class in an actual courtroom setting. Let's go. Oh, by the way, what grade are you guys in? 11th grade. We're all in 11th grade. 11th grade? 11th grade. Yes. What class would that be? Class 2017. 2017. Yeah! We're not getting out of the park. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Courtroom time. All right. Courtroom. So we have the jury area. Okay. And we have the tables for both sides for both parties with the plaintiff or the prosecution, depending on the type of trial being on this side, the defendant on this side. Okay. Um, this is actually the witness box. So if when we're doing mock trials, the person who's pretending to be the witness, they'll sit here and they'll be sworn in and they have to testify. Mm -hmm. This is the judge's area. And here goes the clerk of court, which is the one that manages all the paperwork and everything for the mm -hmm. for the judge. My class last year, when we went to a competition called We the People, where we have to learn the Constitution and talk about um, its ramifications, like in the present day, and we got third place at the state level, and we got gifted the like, Constitution. Wow. Oh, that's a trophy. See, that's, I was looking at it right now. So we, when we got third place at the state finals, um, we received this trophy of the. Justice. Mm -hmm. You like hold it like yeah, yeah. I can hold it. Come on, pump it. You just want it, yeah. Congratulations, <laughs> yeah. Jerry's gonna show us homeland. We just got word, Mr. Stevens class. It's outside in PD doing PT. So he's outside in the police department doing physical training. That's what PT stands for. And since we know PT is so special to Jerry, yes. he's gonna go outside and show us how to do PT. Uh, I don't know you had it like that or you just run in class like that, man. Well, that's what happens when you step up to the plate to the junior. That's what I'm talking about. So who, what grade were they? Uh, like I was explaining to her, those are sophomores. Sophomores. Uh, and in your sophomore year, you begin with the tactical version of Homeland Security. Yeah, so I was like, oh man, Jerry got him in trouble because they started PTing like that when you walked in. Yeah. That was pretty good though. How often do they do PT? Oh, uh, we usually try to do PT at least twice every other week. Okay, so we're going in. All right, show me what you got. Uh, I definitely want to start here. Oh, yes. Um, this is the trophies that we received from state competition with the Florida Public Service Association program. And this is the tro all the trophies that we brought back from 2000. 15 and 2016. Uh, there's more that we have hidden. You know, we didn't want to be too uh, arrogant. <laughs> we just showed up. So you guys had that one trophy? Yeah. Wait, but uh, Jerry, this isn't all this homeland that goes. These are Jerry. mixed brand activities. But it's in it's in the homeland. It's in the, yes, it's it's in the homeland the of the class. It's a homeland club. Just saying, there, there was one in the law studies, and, we have and one Jerry, my man, said he had all these. <laughs> Plus, he has that's one. See, she's perfect for law studies because she's right now doing because the lawyer there is thing. Law studies people in <laughs> FBSA. See, and she, she's going to be a good lawyer. Look. Right. So you can't claim that all the trophies but, um, are homeland trophies uh, just because they're placed in the class of the sponsor of the law. <laughs> Doesn't mean they belong to the I think we need I think we need to take this to the courtroom. Uh, we keep most of our material in here. We have our red um ARs. Mm -hmm. 
Um, there's different types. We also have our batons. Uh, we also have our, our flashlights. We also have our traffic batons. Uh, in the Homeland Security strand, you don't uh, only get a Homeland Security certification from Miami Dade College. You also get a 911 dispatch certification um, for the the last two years of your um, school time here. Okay. You take dispatch one your junior year and dispatch two, and so you become a certified dispatcher. Yes, and right after you graduate, you can apply to any uh, department to become a dispatcher. That's interesting. Um, this the first certification depends on you being a dual enrollment, and all three strands offer a dual enrollment program. Each academy that. has that same program. We each get a certificate, yeah. and we each have a dual enrollment component into it. Yeah. yeah. So if you, we actually began the pilot program in which you start dual enrollment the summer after your ninth grade. So that by the time we finish 12th grade, we fit, we've graduated with our AAs and whatever track we're in. Okay. So class of 2017 did that. A few of us, not all of us, and all three of us are here that actually did that, started that. So Law Studies gets um, like a, basically a pre-law degree, or we can also get the paralegal studies one. Wow. For the science, yes. Biotechnician certification. Wow. And a certification in Homeland Security. Wow. You get those certifications plus your um, associate's degree on top of that. Yeah. So this is your, I guess, mock dispatch area. Yes. As you saw on vlog 12, the dispatchers, uh, their, their section, this is a mock area of the section, which is pretty similar to what we showed. And it has to be because as soon as you graduate, you graduate with a dispatch certification and you can apply to any police department to become a 911 dispatcher. Interesting. <clears throat> Alright guys, time to go to the firearms range. I'm gonna leave my friends for a little bit, but I'm gonna come back and they're gonna help me sign off. So, let's go. Alright, I'm standing outside our Miami Police Firearms Range. It's an indoor range. Um, the reason why I'm wearing my glasses is because you always have to have protective eyewear and earwear when you go into the range. Hey, what's going on, Sarge? Hey, how's it going? All right. That's Sarge. Sergeant of the range there, range master. All right, so we're gonna head in now so I can do my annual qualification. I'm gonna grab some ears. I already got my eyes on. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go in! This is our firearms instructor! Officer Thompson, what's going on? What? Go take your ears off, Nick. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Thompson, uh, or as I like to call him, Rob, my friend here. Um, he's going to be with us today. He's our firearms instructor here at the Miami Police College and Training, training, center. training center. Officer Thompson, what makes you qualified? to teach me how to shoot. Uh, I got about 10 years of service. All right. Last two and a half years of training. Okay. Uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement has uh, decided upon themselves to make me a farm instructor. I uh, also teach uh, criminal law, defensive tactics, and driving and taser. I'm gonna have to put away my camera because I need my hands to shoot. So I'm gonna let the Sarge take over here with his camera. It's a little bit bigger than mine. And, uh, and also, I can only shoot one gun at a time, so I'm gonna have to put these guns away. Before we shoot, we empty out our duty rounds, and uh, Officer Thompson here can explain the difference between the duty rounds and the range rounds a little bit better. The training round we're gonna use is a much safer round. It's not lead, it's actually zinc, so prolonged exposure is not as great as if we were handling lead today. Um, they're a little bit softer when it comes to the recoil, uh, and that's pretty much what we use on the indoor range. The hollow points actually have a, a, a indention in the center here, and the idea is that when it hits uh, a, a soft target, or if we have to use it in a defense situation, uh, it mushrooms out and it slows the projectile down to the, to the degree where we won't have over penetration. So it's safer to use uh, real life environments. Uh, real quick, this is the Glock Pop 22, 40 caliber pistol. It has a capacity of uh, 15 rounds. It's a fairly robust weapon. Little or no maintenance. Uh, I think it's going to pretty much a while. It's fairly accurate as well. It's 
the pretty much go-to weapon of uh, law enforcement in the United States, and it's a weapon that we choose to use as weapon. So, Glock, good job on the Glock. It's also really easy to work on as well. Two rounds from the hip, stand by. Guys, so as you see, my target here, tight grouping, it's a marksman. Oh wait, no, this is number five, I was over here. Uh, ready? Alright. I'm Nick with Miami PD. Abby. Ariana. Gary. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe on YouTube. Adios. Bye. 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 Come with the Warriors.